Welcome to today's video guys and guess who is back packing everyone's orders and getting them out today. Thanks Haruka. She's busting out everyone's orders. Um, but if you guys haven't jumped on the new merch drop yet, definitely do because I am also giving away this all black and 330mm Nardi Classic that was initially on my S15 before we turned it into Yashio Factory Spec S15. As well as some other cool channel memorabilia like my initial first driving gloves that kind of started everything with my driving and uh, the original drift button that came on the S15 too. So a little bit of memorabilia, kind of uh, I guess special for any of the OGs and stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to do anything crazy, all you need to do is just place an order um, at the end of uh, this Friday, USA time, I am going to just pick a random person's order and ship this stuff to you, all three items. So jump on there, grab yourself some new merch, and uh, one of you guys will be lucky enough to get literally that all black Nardi Classic. These are kind of rare these days to find an all black in that good condition. That's probably a $500 wheel, so don't sleep, as my good friend Tommy would say. Next thing on the agenda for today, <laughs> is this. <laughs> As you guys know, the alternator on my Skyline started doing some strange things, so I ordered another aftermarket one. Um, these ones are just rebuilt, um, like Bosch or Mitsubishi ones that Nissan would use, so some company here in Japan rebuilds them, but obviously they're sold as aftermarket alternators, JCV alternator. Anyways, these are pretty cheap. Oh, it came from Osaka. There you go. Um, they're only about like $200 and it's practically a brand new alternator. So I'm going to throw this on there today. That should solve all my problems. Um, this thing actually looks really nice. Not going to lie. It looks better than the current one that's on there. That's for sure. Um, and I did diagnose it a little bit more. It seems like my alternator just can't handle the drawer of when I'm running that extra overheating AC fan on. As you guys know, I did a little bit of a relay mod so that whenever the AC is on, my overheating fan on the Skyline turns on as well, which just provides more airflow, helps keep temps low and stuff like that. And I guess with that running constantly, if I'm running the AC, uh, the other alternator that I had, I guess, just cannot handle it. And I did a bit of research and the alternator I put on there, it's a little bit lower amperage than the one that's going on there now. So that one should be fine. Um, and it does seem like, cause like I've been driving the car for the last few days and the alternator has been sitting at like 13.9, 14 volts, no problem. So it does seem like when I have the AC fan, uh, the extra overheating fan disconnected, it, it's no problem at all. It's just when that's running constantly, I guess it draws too much and the alternator can't handle it and it gets really, really hot and then just kind of stopped working. Also, I can't remember if I told you guys this, but I started to regrass my whole front lawn section here. I don't know if you can call this front lawn because this is all it is, um, but it's looking really nice. It's, it's all starting to sprout up now and uh, hopefully in a month or so, It'll be nice and thick and I can uh, mow it for the first time. Poor girl, I haven't touched her since uh, the competition. I didn't even realize I left uh, I left the competition <laughs> tags on there. Oh well. Oh, that's the Skyline key, Sam. There we go. Got to bring this up to the house because all my tools are in it. And we should probably take these 17s off the rear and put the 18s back on. My God, she sits low with those. <laughs> It's been about a week and this thing hasn't been started. Will she start first go? Boom. Straight to light. No oil pressure light, so I'm happy. And my mirror button still works. I'm happy. Every day that that still works is a day that this Sylvia is still cool to me. The moment that stops working, I'm probably gonna go insane. Seriously, it's so rare to find a Sylvia or a Skyline that has working side mirrors. The one in my Skyline, only the left mirror will go out. It won't come back in. And neither will the right one will, won't go in or out at all. I don't know why it's, I need to probably investigate that. I'd love to make like a little kit or a video on how to fix those issues. But uh, one day when I have time to look into that kind of thing, I guess. Now, fortunately, um, replacing an alternator on these is actually really simple. It's roughly like four bolts, maybe one or two more or less, I'm not sure. Um, but off the top of my head, I just have to undo the tensioner, which pulls the belt off. And then after that, there's just one bolt that goes through the bottom bracket here, all the way through here that I then unbolt and then the whole thing comes off. It's really easy. Um, now, you can normally pull them out through the top, but if you have intercooler piping like I do, just drop them straight down. So I'm gonna quickly do that, 
just need 12 and 14 mil spanners smash this out real quick and then uh, we'll jump in the car and take it for a drive and make sure everything's all good let's go man it hasn't even been like five minutes and this alternator is literally about to fall on the ground so easy to remove um, one thing I didn't mention, make sure you disconnect your battery, right? I was about to take off the back terminal and I just remembered, wait, if I touch that and the spanner hits anything, it's gonna short out. So definitely don't forget that guys, super important. Now, just gotta wriggle this a bit and it should slip straight off. Um, may need to pull this tensioner completely out actually. Just so it's out of the way. Hey, check it out, 333. <laughs> wait a second guys wait for it wait for it to turn 33.4 there it is 33.4 <laughs> oh man all right here she comes out comes the alternator there we go oh I did forget one whoop that's the alternator falling straight. Luckily, my sway bar a bit there. Um, I did forget one ground wire, apparently. I forgot that there's a uh, 10 mil ground wire there, which I'll quickly get off. So this is what I was saying with this alternator being way beefier than this one. So I bought this one, um, it was a random one. Oh, wow. Jeez. No wonder this thing was overheating. Look how clogged up that is. You can see that these two alternators are very different. This is the one that should have been on there, and this is the one that I, I just randomly bought it off Yahoo Auctions. Uh, it said it was for an RB25. Um, I suspect, I don't know what model this one came off, but you can actually see the windings and the coils are super thin compared to how thick this one is. Like, it's way thicker. Um, and just look, this side by side, you can just tell the body itself. If we can line that up there. You can tell that this is much smaller compared to this one. This one's a much bigger unit. So this is probably why this one never really worked. This came from, I think this was um, uh, another rebuilt one as well. And you can also see that now when I got this one and I put it on, I knew that the bolting points were different. Like this was a 10 mil instead of a nice big 12 mil and things like that. So you can really see that this is a much beefier alternator on the back here compared to this. Um, another thing is, see the earth point is on here on this one and here compared to this one was all the way over here. So this one, while it did bolt up to my engine and it did get me going and stuff, I always knew that this wasn't the correct alternator that was supposed to be on here. But I didn't realize that it had uh, um, such a smaller kind of winding and output amperage wise. So I'm glad we're going to this big boy here now. Should solve a bunch of issues and uh, we should get proper power output where we can run that fan con constantly and have no problems. Um, in the future, I am going to be doing an LS1 alternator upgrade, but that's when we go to rebuild the Skyline and stuff. So this was just kind of like a cheap solution to solve the problem for now so we don't get stuck anywhere. Because I do have some pretty big, uh, a pretty big road trip to do on the Skyline this weekend. So we need to get that done. Let's get this thing back on there. Should be good to roll. So I've got the new alternator installed now, looking all shiny down there. And if you can notice there, the plugs and everything all connect up in a different orientation. Before, this plug would be up in the top plugged in and this was further behind. Um, and I did a bit of research in my um, Yahoo Auctions purchase history. And I found that this actually came off a non-turbo RB25, uh, RB20, sorry. Um, from an R33 or R34 Skyline, I believe. Um, so that's probably why it's a much smaller one and nowhere near as much amperage out, uh, output. And I think this was fine up until we started using that fan, like I said, but also because I did um, the resistor delete for the fuel pump and we're running directly off a relay now straight from the battery and the alternator. So this, the fuel pump's actually running at 100% all the time. So I think with that combined with the fan is uh, probably what caused this thing to no longer be able to provide enough uh, amperage or voltage for everything and started overheating and having problems. So I think this is probably fine. The fact that like I'd let it cool down, unplug that, and then it'd be totally okay, probably means that this will be fine for something that's not drawing as much. 
as what my car is. But anyways, so we got that fresh, big, beefy one back in there, the original correct size one that should have been on this car. Let's start her up, see if she runs. Got the battery connected again. Hopefully, she just turns over and we're all good. Woo! Straight to life. What's my voltage gauge doing over here? Oh yeah, yeah, we're good. Uh, it's hard to see because the light for the needle doesn't work anymore, but we're sitting at like 13.5 there. These gauges read a little bit off. And we'll wait for the digital dash to fire up and that'll give us a true reading. 14.5 volts, yeah. That's much better. That's where we should be at. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that solved. Took me all but 15 minutes maybe. Mm, we're all back up and running. One thing I forgot to say is always check that your belt is uh, perfectly straight and parallel. It's not like wobbling or anything like that um, because that will then mean that you've got the spacer in the wrong place on the bottom part of the alternator. It's very important you get that correct because if your belt is kind of on an angle, then it's just going to fly off on you and you're going to get stuck somewhere. So just always double check that before you go. We're looking perfect there, no problems. So I think we're all G. It is now the next day and I have been out road testing the car. Alternator is perfect. We're not seeing any voltage dropping below 14 volts, which is perfect. Um, and it further confirms that, yeah, the other alternator was just dropping uh, voltage and overheating and, and shutting off, essentially. Um, but I am about to go to UpGarage because I've got some parts I want to get rid of, the old brake rotors and stuff on this and just sell it to them. Um, one thing in Japan is a lot of trash items, especially metal, is you have to go to the convenience store, buy a special sticker, and for these big items like brake rotors, it's like $10 to pay someone to pick it up. Um, which metal is worth money and it makes no sense um, but it's just a thing here in Japan when it comes to disposing of like electronics pieces of metal and car parts and stuff like that at your house so a way to combat that is just to take it to up garage and sell it to them now those brake rotors they're totally fine they just need to be spun up on a lathe and and you know uh, re-grinded um, so they'll probably buy them off me and do that and sell them um, and I'll probably make five bucks off them rather than me having to pay for a company to pick them up and scrap metal it and make money off it. It makes no sense, right? So anyways, um, that's what we're gonna do today. Sell off some old parts that I had lying around that I don't need. Plus we get to look at what stock they have here. But I just wanted to take a little bit of a moment to apologize to you guys for not uploading for the last few days. I had every intention to. Um, it's just, I've been doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes with paperwork and setting up comp the company for uh, the YouTube channel and the merch store here in Japan. Um, I'm finally moving everything over from Australia to Japan, um, finance-wise. So unfortunately, that takes a lot of time and effort and a lot of paperwork that just doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Um, if you guys pay attention to a lot of news articles online from like the Wall Street Journal or Forbes, you know that they recently put out an article saying that Japan's accounting system and financial system is almost 50 years behind the rest of the world and definitely felt that today because um, despite all the evidence and everything that we have and, and any other country, what I do is considered a business. Um, according to Japan, um, that is not a business. Well, according to the bank we went to. So we've got to now go around from bank to bank to bank and find one that actually recognizes an online store and being a YouTuber and marketing and all that kind of stuff as a business. It's, it's really bizarre. Um, ultimately, um, we believe it's more about my family name, my surname not being Japanese. Um, unfortunately, there is a lot of discrimination in these kinds of things here in Japan. And if you don't have a Japanese name on the paperwork, they're very reluctant to help you out and do anything official with you business-wise. That is one kind of downside to being a foreigner living in Japan, um, but it's all overcomable and we will work around this. I know we can. It's just trying to find the right bank and the right people to work with. For the meantime, though, we do have a solution and everything. It just kind of sucks because you want the official business bank bank account and things like that. I know this is kind of a little bit weird and not car related, but I just want to share my life and, and everything that's happening here in Japan so that you guys get a really good understanding. You know, it's not always sunshine and happiness and rainbows and candy everywhere here. There are definitely a lot of things that you have to get by um, and work around here and paperwork and accounts and discrimination and racism are all things that you actually have to seriously consider if you want to move and live in Japan.
But enough business talking depressing things, let's talk about something that we all can enjoy. Car parts and cars. So let's get inside and see what they got. Got my number, which I'm waiting for them to call me out for, and I'll let you guys know when, uh, how much I get for those rotors and the alternator and stuff like that that I cashed in. But I just wanted to quickly swing through the engine section here and see if there's any like kind of cool parts or anything like that I want. Man, this is so cute. This little baby three-cylinder, little Honda motor, 60 bucks. Still trying to sell this block. I, wonder if, I think that we could get this cheaper off them, but the sidewalls don't look that great. Yeah. I'd have to inspect this too to make sure it's not a cracked block. Is it an N1 block? Yeah, it's a 34 GTR block. No, it's a 05U. Is that an N1? I can't remember. I need to Google that. Gotta remember like how to look out for an N1 block. Wouldn't be a bad block to just purchase, but I mean, I have no way of knowing if it's got any cracks or anything like that. It says it's been slightly overboard and it had a Tomei powered 87 mil, one millimeter overboard bore. Which isn't too bad. I'd probably just pick this up and take it to my guys at Tomei around the corner and ask them to inspect it and then take it back if there's any problems. Our crowds are usually pretty good. Yeah, still looking for a 4.3 diff. Hopefully one pops up again soon. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really enjoying all the parts that they're getting in for turbos and stuff at the moment. A lot of like 180SX and SR20 parts plus JZX100 parts. JZX110 turbo here, good condition. N like minimal shaft play that's perfect for a journal bearing that's normal shaft play this would be a great replacement for anyone who's blown up their jzx turbo at uh, ebisu or something not bad pricing's pretty good on that stuff too like 140 dollars for that thing it's not bad yeah i'm gonna keep looking around I'm trying to figure out uh, i need to get another bride seat um because Right now there's a ton of back orders from Brid. And um, I can't, I've ordered a bunch of seats, the new ZF4s for my S15 and stuff like that. And they, ooh, the new Zero. This is very cool. That's fairly cheap too for fiberglass. Only a thousand bucks, that's actually not that bad. These Recaros are kind of sick. I'd put these in like an old FC or something. They look epic. They just belong in a retro old car. Very cool. Well, they called my number and we made a total of 1,000 yen. <laughs> it's about 10 bucks. So it went from me having to pay $10 to get that stuff picked up and taken to the dump. Or I brought it to UpGarage and made $10 and they're going to end up making money by selling them scrap metal. So it worked out pretty good in my opinion. I've been wanting one of these exhausts for the longest time for the 33.4. And I'm about ready to just buy a brand new one from HKS because every time H, um, Up Garage have these, now this is for a 34 GTR, so it actually won't fit too well on mine, but you can make it work. But it's missing the most important piece, right? No Skyline has the square flange here. That's a HKS thing. There's supposed to be a piece that goes from this and connects to the CAT, the catalytic converter. Um, and every time I'm here, all they ever have is just up until this square flange, which just doesn't, I can't obviously use it, unfortunately. There's no point. Man, that's such a nice one though. The reason why I want this is because it's four inch, or th three and a half inch, I think it is, all the way into the muffler. And the internal parts of the muffler are still three inch, uh, three and a half inch. So that means it's high flow all the way through. As in a lot of the exhausts in Japan, they may have three or four inch piping that comes to the muffler, but the muffler itself is only two inches inside diameter. So it restricts your exhaust flow a lot. And the first most important thing if you ever wanna make power on an RB is an unrestrictive exhaust. Um, but don't be stupid and get something like blast pipes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so like even this one's a really good one. See how unrestrictive that is all the way through? But let's see, I mean, that's got a silencer in there, but that's essentially what a lot of the exhaust systems in Japan do. Um, here's another example. This one's three inches in and it goes down to two inches inside. So yeah, you just gotta make sure you get a good flowing exhaust. So I think we're just gonna buy a brand new one from HKS directly. That supercharger kit it is still here. Oh my gosh. That's a $500 part. I wish I saw this here. 
It's only $40? Oh no, that's off an S15. Yeah, okay, don't worry. Is that the same? No, it's different, yeah. Okay. I just nearly freaked out because <laughs> I thought that was an R33 Skyline one. It's not. I was going to say, I paid $500 from my brand new one. <laughs> I nearly cried. Oh boy. There's really not that much new at the moment. So, what is this? Hey, that's kind of, that's actually a cool car. Anyways, FC gang. I need an FC. There's not really much uh, kind of new stuff here. So I think, uh, oh, we'll go quickly check the wheels out. I did see some wheels that were new, so we'll go quickly look in the wheel section and then we might bounce. Nice set of some OEM factory 32 wheels, $250, and these come on winter tires. Not a bad thing to uh, grab yourself coming into winter and snow and stuff. Kind of always wanted a set of these. We'll wait till we get a shop and then maybe I'll buy a set just to keep in the corner. I just think they look good on like air chassis and stuff like that. So if ever I get a Beedo, it'll look cool. Let's see if there's any new wheels in the sizing that I need. Ooh, what are these? RZF2's AJ, weak size. Come on. Yeah, don't see much new stuff. I don't like my chances, guys. These rays are kind of cool. 9J, okay, that's not too bad. These would fit a Skyline okay. Not, like that's okay sizing, um, but definitely not the sizing I need. Now some more 9Js, that's not too bad. They got some new Ray stock. Anything else in here? These, I swear to God, every time I see these, just so tempting. I really like these wheels. The T5Rs really do look nice, don't they? 9.5 plus 12, that's, that's actually good uh, JZX100 sizing. These would look good on a JZX. Oh, as long as you got some over fenders, actually. I have to add that. JZX100, like, to fit those wheels on front and rear, you probably need that spec sizing. You need some over fenders, some big uh, fenders. Yeah. A lot of 19s, hey. We've been getting a lot of 19s in stock recently. I don't know why so many people run these Toyo tires. I've never had any good experience with them. I know they... Like, a lot of people do talk highly of them, but I don't know, maybe I've just been spoiled with my Valino um, per gears. <sighs> These are cool wheels too, but they really need to be rebarreled. Only 8J plus 44, yeah. These would be cool to be rebarreled. Don't mind these. Okay. Not bad SSRs. Let's bounce. I don't really see much here that I want to get. These 17s aren't too bad. Not bad steerers. Some old old school wheels. Mm. Ooh, what are these? 19s, damn it. Feels kind of weird coming from up garage, not spending any money, but gaining money. Um, but then again, you know, they didn't really have anything that I needed or wanted in stock. Uh, you know, I was looking for a bride seat potentially, but they didn't really have any of the ones in stock that I wanted. And because I want just one to like be a temporary fill until the new ones come in, um, there wasn't really anything there that met the budget for that. So I think I'm just gonna borrow a seat from Okachan or something. Um, but otherwise, still, it's good looking at parts and seeing what the pricing is doing and stuff like that. So I'm gonna head home. A lot of guys in bikes today, actually. Not too bad. Once again, my alternator voltage is perfect on the money. I think we are all G. I've always been a pretty big fan of the Gallants or Legnums. They look nice. So back home now, and I really hope you guys did enjoy today's video. I know we did something simple like just changing an alternator, uh, but I'm a pretty big advocate for showing these kinds of simple jobs and things in my videos because I think it's important because you never know who's watching the video, and if one person who's young, who's never worked on cars before, and gets to see how to change an alternator and they get to learn something new, then I'm happy. And uh, I know a lot of other YouTubers and stuff like that in the automotive scene, it's very easy to get caught up in, oh, no one wants to watch me change brake pads. No one wants to watch me change brake rotors or accessory belts or simple stuff like that, you know. 
but I think it's important that we do show that stuff, even if it is just for a little bit, so that people can learn and uh, we can continue to pass on our knowledge, even with, once again, those really simple things that we take for granted. So that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We got to go to UpGarage, make some money on something that was going to cost me money to throw out, and a bunch of other stuff. So it was a good time. And I know we did kind of touch on talking about the whole business stuff behind the scenes here in Japan and how hard it is for a foreigner to you know, get some... Uh, bank accounts created and just dealing with paperwork and stuff like that. Um, literally one thing to try and give you guys like put everything in perspective is Japan is literally like 50 years behind the rest of the world when it comes to anything financial, finance wise, bank accounts, paperwork, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Uh, it's kind of that issue with when it comes to creating a bank account. They're like, oh, you need to have been a company and running for at least 12 months before we let you make a bank account. And it's like, but how can I be a company and be running for over a year without a bank account? That makes no sense, right? So there's this weird thing that you have to do. Anyways, um, we've got a workaround for now and we'll be able to go back there in probably 12 months and create the account um, with a bunch more paperwork, but we just got to prove that we're essentially are a business even though everything we gave them already does prove that they specifically require evidence and bank statements and stuff that you've been operating as a business for over 12 months which is so weird because anyways coming from Australia I know for a fact that when you make a, a business a bank account you get an ABN a business number and everything from the government saying you have a registered business you can walk into any bank and create a business account in 15 minutes and walk out um, so it's just bizarre that they expect you to be already operating for a year, but how can you operate as a business without an account? You see the problem there? There's things like this everywhere throughout Japan, and it's it's very bizarre how the paperwork system works here. Um, but anyways, that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Smash that like button, write us a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Tomorrow's going to be a sick day. We're going to the options. I hope you enjoy. Peace out. Jamata.